Joy Reid passionately highlights the devastating effects of climate change, painting a vivid picture of heat waves blazing across the United States. She emphatically blames these extreme weather conditions on the rampant climate crisis, a catastrophe she argues is fueled by political and corporate greed. But we begin tonight with the lucrative politics of climate collapse and the greed that is literally letting our country burn. Today, millions of Americans from Iowa to Maine are suffering through heat warnings, watches, or advisories. Cities across half of the country, like Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Detroit, Philly, and now New York, are hitting temperatures exceeding 90 degrees Fahrenheit, though it feels closer to 100. Many of these cities could experience heat indexes hitting 105 degrees by Sunday. These increasingly oppressive hot days aren't a coincidence. They aren't. They are the predictable impact of the climate crisis. And they're not just an inconvenience, they're also killing us at higher rates. Yet conversations about climate change often meet with skepticism, particularly when delivered with a sense of urgency or dire warning. Critics dismiss Reed's comments as exaggerated or part of a larger agenda to promote policies that might stifle economic growth and restrict personal freedoms. The casual retort, ma'am, it's called summer, starkly overlooks the notion that current weather patterns are abnormal, primarily driven by human activities. Instead, it leans on the idea of natural climate fluctuations. There is a significant focus on economic stability and personal accountability. Critics argue that climate policies frequently neglect the economic ramifications and the impacts on individuals, especially those working in sectors like energy production. They call for a more balanced approach, one that weighs both environmental and economic consequences, advocating for innovation and personal responsibility rather than heavy-handed government intervention.